Good morning, my family, and it is early morning. I've been up since about 5.45, and I got hubby off to work, started our beans, because today is a day we are canning butter beans. Now, granted, those are also called large lima beans. They're the white ones. The difference between uh, these called butter beans and actual lima beans that I've known to be green is the uh, tenderness. One is young, one is more mature. Butter beans are, like I've sp spoken before, butter beans are uh, mature lima beans. And I'm going to can these by the dry because we are having a hard time trying to find butter beans already canned. So we're gonna do our own. I actually found some. I got about six pounds of it, but we're only gonna do three because I'm gonna get at least nine uh, pints if not more I'm going to show you how to do that for yourself so if you're in the same position that I am although some people in certain areas don't have to worry about it like we do y'all this is a coffee moment today definitely a big cup day so yes so um I'm seeing that some people don't have to worry about it. Some people do. I don't know what it is about our town or whatever, but I'm having to worry about it, so I'm making my own. I'm not going to fret. I'm just going to go ahead and do what I normally do as a homesteader. So I currently have my butter beans. I'm just going to call them that. I currently have my butter beans going by the National Food Preservation Site, and I will actually put that link below in the description for you. But... Um, Sutton's Days, honestly, Sutton Days has been doing this twice. I have followed her process and she, I trust her. Um, she doesn't particularly like them, but her husband does. And she had done a taste test with him and found that they were not mushy. Now, I do have some beans that um, I can highly agree the process that I've done. Now, I have compared the National Food Preservation Site, which I trust versus my canning book from Ball and the canning book from Ball basically says to boil them for 30 minutes and then leave them for an hour. The food preservation site states on the opposite. They say to soak them overnight and then boil them for two minutes and leave them for an hour. And that's exactly what I'm doing. My hour is about up in about four, uh, in about, uh, actually, uh, about a half hour. So in the process of doing this, I am actually setting up my pressure canner because we are going to have to pressure can these. I made a promise when asked, would you please show us how to do this? I absolutely will. But I will tell you, these will be plain. The reason they will be plain, no salt added, no broth, no nothing. I am just going to can these with nothing but straight hot water no salt reason i do all my seasoning in the end and with me cooking mediterranean it allows me to cook the way i should cook with them all natural and then i can change and flavor it later so these are the ways i'm going to be canning it this is up to you if you want to add broth or whatever i'm just going to add plain water they will then be processed for 75 minutes just like all other beans uh, that are dried. I have done garbazzo beans, which is chickpeas, the same way. So these will be done the same. So this is what we're fixing to do today. Um, join me in the kitchen. It's a canning day. It's about to get cold. And so this is a perfect day for canning. It's going to be 31 degrees. We have had rain and I'm actually looking forward to that we're probably going to get some freeze tonight and it's going to be rough on all of us. It means that we're going to have ice everywhere. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and do a quick update on the hydroponic systems and show you where we're at. So let's do that before we go any further. Then I am going to, while I'm waiting for my canner to heat up in my jars, I'm actually going to go take this mop, fix it, and we're going to go to the kitchen. So. Let's show you the aerial garden and we'll be right back. So here is our lettuce. 
these two pods didn't come up so I replaced those with my own seeds and currently I have arugula in both of those little pods we're gonna see if those come up this amazingly is called a top hat tomato this is actually a mini tomato plant that I decided to try in here and it did great this one is a bronze lettuce and these are two other exotic type of lettuces I've never even heard. One's an island, which I think that's what this one is. And I'm not sure what that one is. But they came with this this um, pods already preceded. So we're going to try them out. So far, this is the one in the kitchen. And let's go show you the let pot that I had um, showed you uh, that we had a promotion for. And let's see how that one's doing. Okay, the level on this one's going to be slightly hard, but on this side right here, this is all basil. I am super stoked, y'all, for this. I love my basil. This side right here, this is all my parsley. And I'm still waiting, which always takes longer, is my cilantro. But will you look at this, y'all? We are fixing to have herbs, and the same type of herbs I use every day for my Mediterranean. This is super exciting to me. So, we'll keep keeping a progress on this, keep watching it, and see how things go. Okay, my family. So, we're putting ourselves back together here a little bit. Um, while I'm waiting for these beans to be able to get processed, there's a couple things I want to uh, share with you. One, I have learned when canning beans, uh, following the uh, recommended amount, which is basically fill your jar with one inch of beans and then fill it with your water and you want to leave a one inch headspace. That is absolutely great, except for one problem. One of the biggest problems I'm finding is these beans soak up a lot of liquid. When they do that, there's nothing hardly left in your jar. So I have tested a few other sites, I guess you could say, uh, Carol, the thrifty, um, the thrifty housewife, she uh, also has recommended, and I've tried the method with only going three quarters of the way instead of one inch. It might not give you a whole lot of beans, but when you think about it, when you buy them from the can, I honestly can guarantee they're doing the same thing because there's more liquid. The other process <coughs> that even the food preservation site, the ball canning book, all have stated that once you boil your beans, you strain them, rinse them, and then fill them, and then have a clean pot of boiling water. We are going to be doing that. Some won't. I get it. I mean, it's everybody's kitchen. The reason I'm going to is because when you boil these beans, and, and I get that they're wanting to save water and everything. That's absolutely fine. I totally wish, honestly, I would do the same thing if it weren't for the fact that those beans, when they got boiled, they're also releasing some of the starches, which I do not want in my jar. The less starchy water I have in my jar, the prettier they are. And honestly, a better flavored bean to me. So we on this channel are going to be using fresh boiling water which I'm currently doing right now while we're waiting for the canner to load and the butter beans to be finished on the resting process so you can do what you want um, some people will just go ahead and fill their jar straight from the water that is in the pot I'm just not going to do that like I said I like a cleaner prettier flavorful bean now, there's not a whole lot of flavor anyways, so I mean, your flavor comes in when you prepare them. So, I'm not really worried even about the flavor. I just, as much starch as I can remove from those beans, including the gases from it, the better off. So, that's what we're going to do today. Now, I'm going to set you up in the kitchen because we are getting ready to start canning as promised. And I'm going to take you through the whole process, y'all. Just so you know that you can do your own butter beans as well. Now granted, these are not fresh. This process is from dried bean only. And they're from the large lima beans. Those things expanded way bigger than I imagined. And 
truthfully i'm now understanding when i look at them where the butter bean came from these are absolutely amazing so let's go in the kitchen let's get set up and let's go to canning this morning okay y'all let's can some butter beans i'm gonna start out with three of my jars ah gotta get my lids be right back okay my friends sorry about that i <laughs> thought i had everything in order one thing I did just see before I start my new season, I am definitely going to have to get some canning jars, or not jars, but lids. I am just about out of regular mouth lids, so, and I'm thinking about trying the four jars lids. Y'all, if you are testing those, or if you are using them, please let me know what you think. I've never... I've used a small batch of them, and they were absolutely really amazing. But let me know if you had any other experiences, because I would definitely like to try to get some of those. Alright, on to our canning. Now, as you can see, look at how beautiful. See how big these things uh, expanded? Now, I'm only going three quarters of the way full on my jars, y'all. Besides, I mean, my hubby... He, James, he'll eat them a little bit. He doesn't do it too much due to his diabetes. But I'm the one who generally eats these. So, it doesn't matter if they're not completely full. And like I said, we're not getting the full amount in a can from a store either. So, and I think that's the reason why they still have liquid in theirs. These are just not filled all the way to the one inch mark. I have done this better um, with other jars of beans, especially my chickpeas when I stopped. I'm taking off the, oops, no, i got to get that one back. Um, I'm taking off the skins that are loose, actually, y'all, like those. I'm not going to put that in my jar. So, but I've, I've had some good success by not filling them to the one inch mark like it was said. It's not going to hurt anything, but definitely make sure you put that one inch mark on your liquid. So that looks about right, three quarters of the way full on each jar, just like that. So I still have plenty of room for all of my liquids and for these beans to still absorb, just like so. So this is what we're doing, and now I'm going to take this and fill this with my hot water. To the one inch mark. And I have nice, clean, beautiful water in with my beans. Now these will color because they're going to still cook, especially at 75 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and use this. I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of these up. And like I said, I'm just going to the one inch head space on here. Then I'm going to debubble these, and then if there's still room for them to be filled, we will do so. <clears throat> now, the recipe with three pounds claimed to make nine pints. We'll see if we get that much, if we get more, or if we get less. Like I said, these are pretty good sized beans, so I'm probably looking at probably more. And we're not going all the way up to the one inch mark. So I'm definitely probably looking at more beans, which will take me through the rest of the uh, winter. But with this aspect, it's not about winter. It's about availability. So now I'm gonna take and debubble like I always do. Just take it through here. These beans have plenty of room. So debubbling is seriously easy at this point. I don't want that skin floating in here. I'm shifting my beans around. 
just like so. Recheck my headspace. I want that one inch, and we are definitely not, not there. That one almost is. And come back to this one inch. When you debubble, this is what usually happens. So you just come back and top it off. And then you just take and get your lids and seal them. And that's it. Okay, let me make sure again now. I want to make sure these absolutely have that liquid that they need. Like I said, beans will keep absorbing, and I want all the liquid in my jars. So now I'm going to take my paper towels. I'm going to clean off my edges, and this is really just water, so it's not going to hurt anything. We'll show you how pretty these look afterwards. And like I said, I'm using clean, fresh water. It's just my preference, my choice. I come back and top with my lids. I am not adding any salt. Like I said, I am going to be adding flavoring when I go to use my beans. Because I make my food Mediterranean style and they have a lot of flavor without having to do it now. Shoot, that's hot, y'all. I think I'm going to make me some of them gloves that hold these jars. See how pretty that looks, y'all. Beautiful butter beans. And there it is. I don't have to go buy them. I don't have to worry about not having them on the shelf. I'm fixing to have my butter beans on the shelf. Who knew? Who absolutely knew? And then if I got if I get low, I did an extra three pounds to put away in case I need them. So I'm just doing this basically finger tight. Sometimes I don't know my own strength, so I'm gonna go back on this one. I did this one, yeah, a little too tight. I don't know my own strength sometimes. I'm going to go ahead with the rest of them. I'm going to go ahead and fill these up. And when I come back, I will let you know how many we actually got out of this. And we'll go ahead and start our process. Okay, y'all. So amazingly, as you can see, I have a second stack. I have 15, 15 pints of butter beans. This is what I call super cool. So right now, we're going to seal this off. I'm going to line my canner. Now, I have the Presto canner. I do not have the All-American. Mine has a dial gauge. And I am going to seal this because we're going to bring this up to uh, rolling steam over here at this section where the vent is. Make sure that was nice and pretty easy. So, now I'm going to bring my canner up and I usually put mine at about uh, medium high heat I'm going to allow this to come up to full steam then at that point we are going to time it for 10 minutes set this for 10 minutes so when it's ready this is really cool I love this uh, timer this has saved me in a lot I can now hear it I can see it better it's amazing I just love it. Like I said, so many kitchen um, gadgets that came here that were so beneficial beneficial to this homestead. I can't thank you all enough. You know who you are, and God bless you, because you, you've helped me in so many ways. But anyways, um, we're going to let this come to full steam. Once this comes to full steam, we're going to set our timer for 10 minutes before we seal it off with our stopper. 
Now this one doesn't rock. For those of you who are absolutely new, who have not seen my canning sessions before, this is not the All-American. This is not a weight gauge. This is just a stopper. My gauge is right here on this dial. Every year I take it to my extension office and have, uh, I have it tested to make sure that it's accurate. So far it is spot on. Um, actually the first time I did this I waited two years and the lady who tested my gauge said I must take really good care of it because it was spot on still after two years. And I do take care of it. I wrap it. I put it in a box and I keep it cared for. I try even not to bounce it around. So we're going to let this come to steam. Once we do that, we're going to um, set our timer, use our stopper. And at that point, I will be back because we are going to be babysitting this thing for quite some time. But it's going to be worth it in the end. In the meantime, I'm going to put on some music until we come back. I'm going to do my cleanup and in editing just like that. We'll be back. Okay, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but that steady steam that you're seeing right here, this is where we want to set our timer for for 10 minutes, and this is what we're going to do. So once this 10 minutes is up, we will be back, and I'm going to show you what our next step is. Okay, y'all, so our timer has gone off at this point. Now I'm going to take our stopper and very carefully facing away from me, I'm going to put that on here. And I'm going to stop the steam. Now we're going to consist of building up our pressure. Where I live, I'm uh, my altitude is zero to a thousand. So I'm going to bring my gauge up to ten to eleven pounds of pressure. You have to find out where your altitude is to find out where your uh, psi or pressure needs to be. At this point, once I reach up to that ten to eleven pounds of pressure. I'm going to set my timer then for 75 minutes because I am doing pints. If you are doing quarts, it will be 90 minutes. Please check your altitude though to find out uh, at what pressure you're going to need to be able to do this. So now I'm going to set this for 75 minutes. And this will take a little while, y'all. Sorry about the noise. And we are set for 75 minutes. Now, once I come up to pressure, I'm going to hit this. And we are just going to babysit this. I will not walk away from this canner. Is it a pain in the tail to be an hour and 15 minutes babysitting a canner? Yes. Yes, it is. I find it's very much worth it. And so I am going to... Um, stay with my canner i am going to finish out my process and i'm going to enjoy the products in the end of it so once the 75 minutes is up i will come back and show you what our next step is okay y'all so that is our 75 minute timer going off and it is now time to let this pressure i turn the heat completely off and i'm allowing the pressure to come all the way down I do not remove anything until the pressure is completely down and then this pressure valve is dropped. Once that is done, I will set this timer for five minutes. And at that point, I'm going to wait um, and before I open this. I'm going to try to keep from siphoning as much as possible. Now, for some reason today, unless it's because it's been cold, this canner has been running a little bit higher than 11 pounds, under 15, but still... I'm, too much for me to actually like I've been running over 12 to 14 actually so uh, no matter what I did I had this completely on low so we'll see what happens now but right now I'm just gonna I've got it turned off I'm gonna allow it to drop allow the pressure to drop and then we will be back okay so right now my pressure is dropped completely there's no more pressure according to the dial gauge the pressure button has stopped completely. Now before I move the stopper, it generally says about 5 minutes. I'm going to go 10 minutes. I go the extra mile because I want to be able to not siphon as much as possible. So I'm going to hit my timer for 10 minutes. 
and at that point we will be right back okay so our 10 minute timer went off and at this time it's still at the same aspect i'm going to lift this off i hear no pressure now i'm going to open this just like this and i'm just going to leave it actually i'm gonna let this sit for another 10 minutes before i even open this up then we will come back and we will check on our jars okay my friends well our timer is off moment of truth i guess so we're going to open this away from us at this point looks like we might not have any siphoning which is exactly what i didn't want we don't want siphoning so i do things slowly maybe a little longer than most would but it's well worth it in the end now i always take something underneath my jars when i pull them out and it looks like some of these have already popped while they were in here i want you to see our butter beans though they still have their form all their liquid is still inside of here and this is the reason why i do three quarters of a way i've learned with other beans now that was also with regular just plain water so the beans have produced their own flavoring as well still so i'm gonna go and take these over and we're gonna get these set up I'm just going to go ahead and pull the rest of these out, y'all, and we will be back once I get all 15 jars. Here's another batch. See how pretty these look? Y'all, I'm actually amazed. Now, some of these did seem to break apart. I noticed that when I was actually putting them in the jar, but for the most part, it seems that I'm okay with this. So, um, I still have whole beans. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish with the rest of these, and we will be right back. All right, my family, and that will conclude the end of this video. Now, and yes, I did change. You saw me change, but it's getting colder. Uh, it's finally stopped raining, but now the wind are picking up, and it's getting colder. From what they're saying, if this is true of what's to come into the beginning of next week, I may be ending up taking all those greens that you still see that are growing, that are babies, and yanking every single one of them and putting them up in my freezer. The reason for that, if it is being said that we are going to be dropping down to 9 degrees here in Mississippi, plus have snow or ice, y'all, this is not normal for us, and it's going to be very, very hard on this homestead. I'm going to have to try to secure... Uh, a lot of pens for our birds. I'm going to have to take, basically take what's left of our crops that have been hanging on and probably pull them. The parsley, I'm probably just going to try to do a hoop house. I don't know if it'll hold or not. All I can do is wait and find out. If not, it's okay. I'll just start over. Then again, I might take our greens, but that cold, I don't think they're going to survive. I've seen this before. I've even seen where it dropped down last year about 7 degrees, I think it was, and everything, even our chives just went to mush. So it's not going to survive. I'll just be yanking everything I can. But I'm just going to pray at this point that this is not going to happen, but just in case I'm going to keep an eye on our weather. So, And I'll keep you informed as I do videos with you every day anyways. So we did canning today tonight i'm looking at making a simple dinner however mediterranean and i'm going to probably do in some mash burgers but not your typical american mash burger i'm looking at making lamb burgers so i've got to go get some low carb uh tor or low carb buns to have that with supper tonight i haven't figured out yet what i'm going to serve with this but it looks like it's going to be a simple night because I've got some things to prepare on the homestead and I got things to watch out for. So unfortunately, this is the way it's got to be and this is winter. And it's not something I didn't know about. This is why we prepare every winter because at this point, even my husband's job, they will be out of work. They can't lay asphalt. You can't do anything with weather like this. So 
this is why on our homestead we don't prepare just for winter we prepare for all situations it could be due to just the weather it could be due to a downfall it could be due to economy it could be due to whatever now the thing about these beans i have two sources at this moment i do have a dry source if I find that I don't like these canned, which I will not waste them, I will eat them. But if I find I don't like them this way, I still have three pounds that are dried and I can tend to cook them. And then if I have to, I can freeze them later if I do too much. But I can also take them out by portion sizes. I do not have to do an entire pot of them. So these are the options I have. And they're sealing off beautifully. They look to be in whole pieces, but I won't know. I'll probably open up a jar this week and we'll test them out together. And I will give you my review because I've never done this. I'll give you my review on what I thought about canning these large lima beans, otherwise known as um, butter beans. So I have a couple resources and we're going to be okay. I'm not going to panic. I do know that I've got work ahead of me to do. The only thing I do worry about, basically, isn't about us surviving it. It's the point of my poultry. I really have to be concerned about things like this because these are not temps that this state is used to. Now, last year we had a fluke at one point down that low, and that was not normal. I've seen the repercussions of it, but this is a few more days than just that one day for us so and then on top of that snow and ice we don't normally get that either so it's definitely a different winter but i can't say i wasn't prepared that's why folks i go by my gut instinct when my gut tells me something isn't right i do what i'm what what i'm pretty much instructed to do when i hear subtle little things like winter is coming i prepare as crazy as it may seem, I prepare. It's called discernment. And at this point right now, I'm really, really grateful that I listened to that. I love you all so, so much. And those of you who are also in here with me, those from Texas, Oklahoma, those of you in Canada that you are going through some storms yourself, power outages everywhere those of you in the middle of the United States, for all of us. I pray that we make it through the storms. Hang in there, guys. I mean, winter's not going to last forever. It's going to feel that way. And for a lot of things, this is the hardest season of all, winter. Because everything is gloomy. It's dark. It kind of steals your joy. You miss your sunlight and it's cold. But you know what? We can make it through. You know, if we have to communicate with each other, let's do so. I mean, we, we have each other to lift each other up. It's, it's an ordinary day. It's just like every other day. It's just a different type of day. Find whatever it takes to help lift you up. A lot of times I'll listen to Christian music while I'm doing my chores or while I'm doing canning or cooking or whatever. I just, or even cleaning. Um do what you have to to get through but we will get through summer's coming spring is definitely coming seedlings are getting going to be sprouting we're going to be planting we're going to be starting soon y'all just one day at a time so until next time much love from Parton's Heritage Homestead <music>